Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Lance and today we're going to be taking a look at some cut content from Bloodborne. Now many of you are likely aware that Bloodborne has an optional final boss encountered deep within the game's chalice dungeons, and defeating this enemy grants the player an item called Yarnum's Stone, which performs no function at all, leading to a long-standing mystery around what the point of this anticlimactic item could possibly have ever been. As far as the final game goes, the Yarnum Stone functions as nothing more than an accolade to commemorate this monumental achievement. But we're here to talk about cut content, and so with regard to the once planned purpose of this item, we need to travel to the deepest part of the Hunter's Nightmare. I'm sure anyone who has been to the Fishing Hamlet will recall encountering the Fishing Hamlet Priest. Just to remind ourselves, this fellow paces back and forth at the entrance to the Fishing Hamlet repeating the same chant over and over. If we interact with him, he'll deliver one of two pieces of dialogue. Atonement for the wretches. Lay the curse of blood upon them and their children. And their children's children forevermore. Each wretched birth will plunge each child into a lifetime of misery. Child. Let the pungence of cause cling like a mother's devotion. Interacting with him while having the milkweed rune memorized will cause him to recite a short poem. Curse here, curse there, curse for he and she. Why care? A bottomless curse, a bottomless sea, source of all greatness, all things that be. Listen for the painful chance. Weep with them as one in trance. And weep with us. Oh, weep with us. and then award the player an item. Now, one thing I need to point out is that when we defeat the final boss of the fishing hamlet, this priest delivers a voiceover, reciting another poem, bidding farewell to the orphan of Koz, and expressing his hopeful lamentations of the sea's curse. Ah, sweet child of Koz. Turned to the ocean, a bottomless curse, a bottomless sea, accepting of all that there is and can be. Important to note is that after this happens, if we revisit the priest, his dialogue has not changed in any way. It's all meant for the wretches. That final poem is only ever spoken as a cutscene voiceover. So what does the Fishing Hamlet Priest have to do with the Yarnum Stone? Well, to answer that, we need to turn to a piece of cut content that I was recently able to restore back into the game. I discovered that this priest was originally intended to appear somewhere in the Research Hall map, rather than in the Fishing Hamlet. In the end, all trace of him was removed from the Research Hall map file, but the developers did leave behind an older version of his conversation tree. For the most part, it's the same as what we find him saying in the final game, however there are two important changes. I've swapped his normal conversation tree file with the older version here, and now something changes once you speak to him after having defeated the Orphan of Koz. Ah... Sweet child of Kos, returned to the ocean. 
a bottomless curse, a bottomless sea, accepting of all that there is and can be. As we can see, the original plan was for his ending cutscene voiceover to actually be delivered to the player face to face. However, and once again after defeating the Orphan of Koz, if we have the Yarnum Stone item in our inventory, something different happens when we speak to him. Now please excuse the fact that I've had to switch the text language to Japanese just for this portion, as this menu was never translated to English. The options here read, give Yarnum stone, or refuse. Selecting refuse has no effect, and the priest returns to his rambling. Choosing to give Yarnum stone results in an entirely unused chunk of dialogue being delivered. Kas, fair child of Kas. <laughs> Time is not, and the sea rumbles afar, and yet the mother's pungent devotion can still be felt. Oh, thank you, messenger. I exude gratitude for one such as you. Cos, bless this messenger, this visitor from beyond. <gasps> Switching back to English text, although the menu items are not visible, the rest of his unused dialogue does have captions. Cass, fair child of Cass. Time is not, and the sea rumbles afar, and yet the mother's pungent devotion can still be felt. Oh, thank you, messenger. I exude gratitude for one such as you. Cos, bless this messenger, this visitor from beyond. <coughs> Once this has been done, he has nothing else new to say. So perhaps nothing particularly significant to gameplay, but indeed the Yarnum Stone was once planned to have a small purpose. This priest's reaction to seeing the Yarnum Stone certainly raises some questions about the nature of the item, and why the developers would have removed something like this in the end. For now, that's all I have to say about the Yarnum Stone. Even though it's only a small piece of content, it took me a very long time to get this working, so if you did make it this far, I really appreciate you taking the time to check out my work. If you maybe even happened to enjoy the video, feel free to let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a friendly comment below. As always, I have a lot more left to show, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to keep up with my work here. You can find more ways to follow and support my work in the description, but other than that, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.